Hello and welcome to Don't Feed the Geeks, presented by the Long Island Comic Guys, the masters of the geeky verse. Well, welcome back, geek freaks. It's been a long time. Hopefully, you've watched the Geek Beat already. Um, but we're back, and hopefully, we're going to be better than ever. For those of you who don't know, I'm TC. I'm JJ. I'm Toy Story. And we are Don't Feed the Geeks and the Long Island Comic Guys. Yeah! <laughs> welcome or welcome back, whatever it may be. So we have a really fun topic for you guys today. Jumping right back into it. Cons are back. Conventions. We're going to call this, what, Cons 2.0 maybe? Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. Cons of the sequel. Yeah. Cons. <laughs> Cons. <laughs> Redo. Redux? What is it? Redux? Was it, Redux? Yeah. Yeah. Was it Hot Shots? Hot Shots. Hot shots. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Yeah, we, so, we, need, we need Charlie Sheep. This where is that guy? <laughs> we can probably get him. He, let's cameo him for like fifteen dollars. Right? <laughs> All right. So I don't know about you guys, but the last convention I was at before COVID was New York Comic Con twenty nineteen. Unless there's one I forgot about in between, but I don't think so. No, I think that was it. Right? Yeah, I, I went to one either. No. After. I think that I, was our last one. Yep, that was definitely my last one. Anything like that? I don't think I went. Yeah. To. I don't know if there was any happening anywhere in the country in like January, February. There probably was. It's usually um, pretty quiet locally, I think. Yeah. yeah. But and it's wait, been wait. a year and a half almost at this point, and now they're just they're finally starting back up. They've been they've been they've been going on small scale. Um, yeah. You know, the, the littler the, the smaller shows, which is a couple of vendors, have been happening for a little bit longer, um, lower capacity, obviously. But we're starting to get you know we got the New York Comic Con tickets went on sale, um, and we got a bunch of bigger shows happening this summer. You know, a couple have already happened. So. Yeah. So what what's been announced so far? So we have New York Comic Con. So that apparently sold out quickly, and there's limited tickets, right? Yep. Yeah, they they did this whole like multi pass version versus yeah. I don't know. It was so I think weird. you had to have like at least attended 2019. Yeah, or, well, that's that. for 2019. Right, but then they also had where you can pay them money for like 50 bucks for like a subscription. Right, yeah. To be I able to put too. on, which was kind of, I, I mean, I, that's just, a, that's a money grab to me. Yeah, um, 100%. You get, you know, so I, I don't know how, I guess a bunch of people may have done that. Who knows? I'd like to, I'd love to see those numbers. Yeah, right. So, you know, who, <laughs> who actually did that? Yeah. Um, I tried for the New York Comic Con tickets and it was, it was, you, Again, it was the endless queue. I gave up after five minutes. I was like, oh, you know, after yourselves. I'm not, I'm not, I just tried it because I got the email. Uh, but I, I, I saw a bunch of people having issues. Some people took hours. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the one day they went on sale, they sold out like the whole weekend sold out that one day. I know. So it's freaking it was, crazy. It was disgusting. And the um, interesting part is that they haven't sold out of their vendor space. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. So, I mean, at least that's what I'm hearing from, again, inside sources. Inside. <laughs> yeah. And they're charging probably the same amount, if not more. Probably more, I would say. To, for, to rent those spaces. I would imagine yeah. it's more. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah. I don't know. It's, 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 I'm curious to see what it looks like. I don't want to go, to be honest with you, but I'm curious to see what it, what it looks like. What kind of environment that is. I think we've been saying for years, I don't know if we're going to go next year. So this might be wait, <laughs> It depends when my next kid's scheduled to be born. <laughs> Whoa, if, hey. If, if I try to get in. Well, if the, you mean if the kid uh, um, adheres to that schedule, right? Well, <laughs> my, my last child uh, decided that they they wanted to come sooner rather than later. So if that <laughs> follows suit, I may try to go for one day. We'll yeah. See. You know, the, the problem is, you know, we've gone, the three of us, we've gone to a lot of different shows in different states and everything else like that. We've been to New York Comic Con many times. You know, the problem is these bigger shows like New York Comic Con, they're not as good as the smaller shows. So I, I would and rather... It really depends what you're looking for, too. I think... Yeah, generally... yeah I, I mean... I think the atmosphere, like, there's definitely, like, an intoxicating vibe, for sure, at these big shows. It's why we go still. <laughs> that... It's why we go still. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of announcements. You know, there's it's it's being in like a room with thousands of people who like like the same thing as you. It's it's pretty wild when you think about it. It is, yeah. I mean, in terms of like buying comic books, it's 
I again, I've never been to San Diego Comic Con, but I, it's not a great place to buy them. Like, have I gotten books and gotten them for deals before? Yeah, but it's usually people we already know. Mm-hmm. Who would <laughs> give us a deal anyway? Give us the deal. Yep. Um, you know, those are really expensive. You know, spaces to rent or whatever you know they're doing. So you know, people can't really you know wheel and deal as much as they can at like smaller shows. I would say like for smaller shows, like I love you know, buying at those shows. I mean, the great thing about New York Comic Con for me has always been like the artists and writers and stuff that show up, you get to meet them. And like, it, not so much like the big people because the big people are always like a pain in the butt to go and meet and get signatures from, which I've kind of lost interest in anyway. But like, I love hitting like the artist alley floor. Yeah. That's always been my favorite part of New York Comic Con. You hang out most of the time either there or at the Best Comics booth, just hanging out with people. Yeah, yeah that's right. Bounce around. Like, I'll do, like, you know, normally I'll do, like, a walkthrough of the entire show and just, like, all right, cool. Like, I'm interested in 10% of the show. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've never gone to, I, I think I've gone to one panel, like, and it was all about, it was, like, the Star Wars Rebels one. To yeah. tell you how long ago that was. Oh my God. That was a while ago. Yeah, I went to that, the I went to the Jessica Jones season one. Oh, did panel. you? I saw the first two episodes there, like oh, months before they came out. That was cool. That was really cool. But, yeah. So that, I think, I think they, right they, before that we were at like a Kevin Smith panel, which that wound up being right. actually awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I'm actually glad we came early. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. And, you know, I've been going since I mean, I think since day one of New York Comic Con, 2013, 2012. And it's changed dramatically. Yeah, I think I'm, it's way, It's earlier than it's that. It's earlier than that. I think it was 06 or 07. Was oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Way, yeah, way, way longer. But you, you had been going since the beginning, right? Since the beginning. And it's changed dramatically. I mean, it used to be, you know, more comic central. Like, that's what it was. And then it grew into this whole from comics to, you know, a lot of media, a lot of movies, a lot of, you know, it's like um, a pop culture experience. Yeah, right? and then it gets into more of you those know, small mom and pops, like people making stuff their own to sell. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's. I mean, it's a big cosplay show too. There's, I mean, there's a lot for like anyone within like the industry, and you know, it's not just one part of it. There's a lot for everyone. Anyone who's into like geekdom at all, it's really a catch-all for them. It's not really a comic con anymore. I would say. So, what other shows do we know of that are uh, that are supposed to happen this year? Um, uh, the tri-state area with terrific cons the first weekend of august right oh yeah but terrific i'm gonna cons. try to go to that friday i don't yeah. know if it if i'm gonna be able to make it happen but i'm, I'm gonna try to go there. it's my sister's birthday i don't know if i could that weekend so i don't know if i can make that, it but we'll see yeah that's, my mother's is saturday that's why i'm not gonna i, I wanted to spend the night but i don't think yeah. it's gonna be. we've done that show that's a pretty decent show i, I enjoy that show yeah it's it's yeah. got a good amount of like you know lower level celebrities you know we met val kilmer there uh, last year, which was a little, and the guy that the, the guy that voiced, uh, you know, uh, Thundercats. Thunder oh, I met um, I met Billy D. Williams there. And Bill, yes, yep, yep. right. That was cool. Yep. Yeah, it's a, it, it, what's nice is that with that type of show, you can get really personal with those with those type of people. Where yeah. like a big show like New York Comic Con, it's it's nah. ca- it's a cattle herd. Like it's like sign, you're gone. Right. Sign, you're mm-hmm. gone. Not a hey, how's it going? What are you doing? I mean, the guy that did uh, what's the guy's name that did uh, the Thundercats? Do we know is the Larry Kenny. So I mean we 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 BS with him for a while. He gave us yeah, a free voiceover. A like yeah. it was it was really cool in those smaller yeah. shows. And and they always get a really good um list of like old and new comic people. Like I always like, you know, they had like uh I can't remember his name, but they had a but they always get like a bunch of great like nineties Superman people and I, I feel yeah. so Jerry Ordway's one. Um I forget whoever was working on the Death of Superman. I'm, I'm blanking, but it's always a you know it's always a good grouping. You know they usually have like a good amount of comic vendors there. It's like probably like a show size like Baltimore. Maybe Baltimore is a little bit bigger, but you know that's another show that I love. Like you know that's that I feel like is a comic con. Like Baltimore that, feel like is a comic con. Like yeah, there's cosplayers and stuff that go, but that's like that's not, books. Not art. as much though. Yeah, it's less. I, you know, you get some celebrities too. They had some big ones, like the guy who played Luke Cage was there. They had, um, you know, uh, Will Wheaton was there. You know, they get a decent amount of like celebrity people, but it's really focused on, you know, the comics, comics and art, and the art, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. great. Which is our kind of show, really. 
But I mean, you know, there's there's something different for everyone. So and, like, I understand why people really want to hit like the New York. And on the yeah. and on the flip side, you have Rhode Island Comic Con, which is more media heavy, like a like right. big, big, big yeah. giant actors and actresses, and you know, you do got some comics, but it's it's more geared towards heavy hitter uh, actors and actresses. I get, feel like their like, weakest thing is is the comic side because they actually always get like a really good showing from the artist. And like writers, like I feel like that is always pretty strong in Rhode Island, which is kind of the reason they've gotten me to go the last few years. But I mean, like, yeah, they get huge celebrities too. You know, I got to meet Dolph Lundgren and Paul Weather. So that was yeah. awesome. But um, yeah, there's a lot of other big shows, Big Apple Con. If you watch the Geek Beat, you heard there was a little drama with that. Um, I didn't hit that. I don't think you you guys didn't hit that either. Right? I did not hit that. It's, it's, it's you know, it's it's such a weird location. It's in a hotel, and it's it's. In Manhattan. So is in that the, even a hotel? It's like a pavilion or something, right? Well, it's a hotel. It was. It's a hotel. I mean, yeah. yeah. I, I don't even know. I, I always thought it was a hotel. You know, it's a great show. I think pre-pandemic, it was a great show because it's so tight. And it, but now I wouldn't be caught dead in a place like that because you everybody's everybody's together. It's like this because it's so small. Mm. Uh, yeah. And they they, love- they pack it in. I would love to hear the what the attendance looked like at that. Show. I know, right? <laughs> um, yeah, and it's always like you. It kind of. I'm not gonna lie. It has a skeevy vibe. <laughs> it's very, it's very skeevy. But we got, we've been there. We got some great deals from there. Oh yeah, we've, we've done well there. Yeah, you know, I think for the most part. I just, yeah, it's you need a tetanus shot coming out of there. <laughs> that was even before. Uh... <laughs> right, yeah. right, right, right. Um, and so I think we all went to, and you know, we, we like the smaller shows. I, I know Toy Story, you didn't make it to it, but um, JJ and I went to Cradle Con, which is out on Long Island by us at the Cradle of Aviation Museum, which if you're in the area and you're not even a comic book fan, it's a pretty cool little museum to go to. I've like been my there in daughter, non-Cradle Con, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, I brought my daughter there and she like, you know, we got she got to see Darth Vader walking around, uh, Spider-Man, uh, someone was dressed as like Elsa. Um, so there was a couple of like cosplayers there. So she got a little excited about that. And then like she wanted to like jump through the planes and like some of the spaceships. So, you know, she had a great time. Uh, for me, you know, I walked around, I, you know, we know Kyle's comics, he was there, but not a lot of other people were there with comics. They had like some pop stuff, like our, our, our other buddy Cliff from Lost for Toys, he was there. He said they were doing really well. It was very light on the vendors. I do think they were having trouble, you know, booking vendors, you know, a lot of people for whatever reason. So a much smaller scale than it's been in the past. It was like, it wasn't called really Cradle Con. It was like Cradle Pop-Up or as a pop-up con yeah. or something like that. So it was like, listen, I didn't really buy anything. You know, I, I walked around. I was looking for some art, but I didn't really see anybody. There was a couple artists there, but no one who like kind of fit the style I was looking to get, you know. How were yeah. comic book prices at the vendors you saw? You know, I, JJ, you're gonna have to answer this because I didn't even ask about any books. In I, I I looked. Um, there was a couple books I was looking at, and it was just it was outside my scope. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, thanks. And anyway, but and they weren't hack like they were like, well, I could do this for you. It was just, mm-hmm. it's it was what I felt like it was one of those. You take it. That's that's what it is. Take like it, it was, <laughs> that's yeah. it. Um, that's not- I. I, I didn't. I wasn't going there to, to look for books. It was just more to get out and just kind of get back into that environment to see what what it was about. Because it's been a while since we've been to something it like was that. A good test run. <laughs> it was, and I took my little boy. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I might have spent a little bit more time digging and looking through if I had. You know, if I was by myself as well. Again, yeah. Like, yeah, you know, sure. I, was, I was just trying to make it like kind of a family Saturday type of deal. But um, Toy Story, you went to. A convention recently too. I went. I've been to two since small. So I went to one of the Clifton shows. Not Clifton. Okay. It was at um, Wayne. Okay. And both both of these were to help Kyle because I owe him. So, mm-hmm. um, but so I went to the Wayne one where it's just comic dealers, and then I went to one day of Garden State Comic Fest. I did get to see Alan at Crato Con, which was you did. Yeah, it was, yeah. Nice. <laughs> it was always a good time to see Alan. But um, I was looking around a little bit at um at the Wayne show, and I was like, these prices are crazy. I'm not even gonna bother. But at, um, at Garden State, there was actually quite a few vendors that had stuff that I like, kind of wanted. So I was looking at some stuff, and I, that's one I really wanted to go to too. There were ones like I'd, I'd say, "Hey, can I see that book?" And I look at it, flip it over, see the pricing, like worse than I've ever seen. I don't know if it was just just the show and the vendors, but I couldn't believe it. There was one book 
one vendor, I'm not going to say who, I don't know if I remember who. It was, he had a price of 1500 bucks on it. It was a great, it was a great, it was a great journey and a mystery. Just that green cover with Thor flying. I really like it. Um, I don't remember what grade, but I took it down to look at it. And as we do, we check eBay. Um, same book, same grade. I could buy it right now on eBay for 1050. <laughs> so I was like, I, I wasn't, I knew this guy wasn't going to come down, but I was like, hey, dude, like, you know, can you do any better? This is what's left, left listed on eBay. And he's like, yeah, I could do 1400 if you want it. I was like, okay, I'm good. Thank you. So yeah, that's the kind of stuff that we're still dealing with. What's that? Needleman. No, it wasn't. It was. It was. It wasn't anybody I recognized before. So, is Garden State Comic Fest? Is that the one that Vinny's brother from Metropolis runs? Yes, Metropolis was there. And you know what, though, I'm not gonna lie to you. I last time we went to, I feel like that show is just priced high. Did you actually? Did you see uh, Chris Campana there when you were there? I think he was there. I didn't see. I didn't. I didn't see him though. I didn't say hi. Yeah, I don't know. It's. Let's go. Let's go into like, like why we think the prices are like that. I, who wants to go first? I think we're all going to say the same thing. Probably. Go ahead then. Uh, Instagram. Yeah. Absolutely. Instagram. Instagram. Social media. eBay. Social I mean, media. I think it's, you know, it's all kind of like a conglomerate. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, like Facebook, 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 and Instagram are probably part of it. Yeah. I know, you know, between what a lot of people have built on Instagram. Um, but I, I don't know if you've noticed this, but I have noticed that, and again, because I did a sale recently, that the buying has slowed a little bit. Like people aren't aren't jumping on. It's price shifting. Anymore. It's definitely shifting. People aren't yeah. buying the same things anymore. It's hard to remove yeah. certain things. It's it's hard to keep up for sure. Yeah, and I'm noticing a lot of the pre the price craziness. Like pe people ask crazy prices for graded books all the time. That's nothing new, but raws are so high too. Yeah. Like you used to be able to haggle and go to get a good deal on a raw book. You can't you can't really do I'm not noticing you could do that anymore. And yeah. I think the problem is to the books that we're looking at, it just happens that, you know, maybe it's our fault for like telling people these are the type of books they should be buying or whatever the case is, is that, you know, you know, everyone's getting into the same thing right now. So, yep. you know, between like, you know, apps and key collector and this YouTuber and that YouTuber. You know, everyone's looking for the same thing, and it's it's driving whoever has those. You know, it's supply and demand, just like mm -hmm. anything else. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, there's a lot of these out there, but how many people are selling them? Again, yeah. it's the same question. Uh, and, I, and I haven't been to a shop in a while. Like, is it still like you can't get books in a shop too? Like the day of? I haven't tried to buy old books in a shop in God knows how long. I mean, yeah, I haven't for months, almost a year. I haven't been to a shop, and it's just well, you, it, you mean older books. Any, exactly. No, no, even any book, any book. Like, like if I so. walk into Midtown Comics, like I may even just go tomorrow and see what I can do. Like I haven't, I haven't been to a shop in a long time. I know our local shop here. You know, you, a lot of times you're just sold out of everything the first day. Yeah, there's a lot of like, I, I think it's a hard part between, especially like outside of like the Midtown Comics, who can order, you know, five thousand copies of every comic so they can have every single you know, variant out there. But I think it's, you know, the smaller shops are having a hard time. And, you know, we may have to have our buddy Oz back, come back on too between, you know, how much they should order of what, like what's going to be hot. And it's, you never know. Again, it's like all these like comic book pushers telling people what to buy from week to week. And, you know, like, yeah, this is hot for the week. It's sold out. But meanwhile, for them to buy, to order that book and people I feel like don't understand this, is that you had to order that three months before anyone even was talking about it. Yeah. So it's it's they're in a tough spot more than anyone else, I feel like, because you know, they just don't know from week to week. And then meanwhile, like, oh, like everyone likes Justice League. So, you know, let's order 50 Justice League. And then, you know, people wanted the first two because there was some first appearance. And then after that, you know, they have you know 50 they ordered 50 issues of you know issue three. And they have 47 left. So, you know, it's they're in a tough spot then, too. It's um, it's it's tough. I don't even know what were we talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So let's get let's get back on topic. We, yeah, uh, sure, as yeah. per, we, we've got off the rails. Yeah, I know. It's okay. uh, so what was our, I guess our next. So we were talking about prices and stuff like that. 
Um, do we think that's going to keep happening? You know, is it going to stay steady? Will prices come down? Prices? Uh, um, I think there's going to be a correction. I don't know if certain things won't plummet. I don't think Silver Age is going to plummet. Um, I don't think scarce books are going to plummet. I think the like the variants and stuff is going to plummet a little bit. Yep. <laughs> I mean, we've always been saying that though. Yeah. The problem is variants will plummet. Mm -hmm. It's just not the new ones. Like mm -hmm. the new ones are going to consistently be valuable for. Yeah, the but that but that one variant from you know 2015. That was exactly. one in a hundred and worth this much back then. Nobody was until cracking. like unless that's a first appearance of some yep. random character like the Miles Morales, exactly. Morales Jurjevic or whatever his name Jurjevic. is. <laughs> um, you know, you never know. It's 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 really a tough situation with like the variants. Uh, but I agree with you. Like Silver Age, like you're never gonna find an Amazing Fantasy 15 for 1500 bucks. Like nope. any grade, you maybe you can get a page for that much with mm -hmm. Spider Man on it if there's somebody rips out a page. Yeah. You can probably pay fifteen hundred dollars for that page, but it's just you know the world we live in. You know, and the and the shitty part is right now, and the thing that's frustrating me, I'm very close to the end of you know my run that I've been collecting, and I wanted to move into some Superman Golden Age, but guess what? Everyone's shifted because again, I don't know if it's what we said or what you know other people have been saying. Like, hey, that was a great time to get into Golden Age because those are reasonable prices. And that's all shot to hell now. Have you been looking? I haven't looked lately. I, I've seen the prices like where they were in mid 2020, where we're like, wow, like we can't believe like this book from the 40s with this great cover is going for this price. Now they're, I feel like they're correcting themselves as well. I, I got to tell you, like I would love for the market to crash because I'm I not know. a seller first. I'm a buyer first. The books I have, I've, I've skimmed it down. I have like 45 comic books. Like real tough. I have forty like forty five comic books. Yeah, but they're know. comics I love. Oh, and, and I'm just, I'm very happy with them. And if the market crashed or I saw the market crashing, I wouldn't sell a single one probably, honestly. Yeah. Unless that's... I had intended to sell it and buy a better copy when it crashes. Exactly. You know? So exactly. That's just me. I mean. Um, so mm -hmm. let's finish this out with uh, kind of one more question here. Do we think the return of in-person cons will affect social media and like online pricing. Pricing, um, well, first presence. I don't think that the in like the it's live sales awesome. and stuff aren't gonna. Are, I don't think they're gonna go away. I feel like people may, sh you know, it's gonna shift. It's gonna, it's gonna correct. Mm -hmm. um, I think there'll be a balance between both because you're looking for different things in different, you know, in each one. I mean, I, I, every now and then I'm laying down, I want to see who's got what, you know, so it's so easy to just hop on Instagram. People are going to keep doing that, I think, you know. It, but it's, it's people just start start. continue to buy. I mean, it's, yeah. it's not going to stop. But the shows give you something else. It gives you a thing to do. It gives you the camaraderie with your friends. You know, it's a trip. It's a, you know, you talk to people, you meet people. So it's a totally different thing. And I think it's going to, you know. And the biggest thing is with that is like you actually get to look at it in your hands. Yes, like, so which I think we've all forgotten how important that is. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and people get burned and they get upset. And it's just like, listen, at the end of the day, and I try to be as fair as possible when I grade, is like I'm not a professional grader. I mean, obviously, like the people who are professionally grading some of your comic books aren't either because they don't know what they're doing. But I feel like sometimes my hands are better equipped to grade your book than, than yeah. some of those people are. But I mean, listen, you know, these people are subjectively saying what a comic book grade is. And, you know, hopefully they're going through a book like we've gone through and like kind of looked for the stuff and had somebody who's been doing this a long time train them in what to look for. I mean, you know, buying a raw book is is a gamble. You know, and, you know, sometimes you win money, sometimes you lose money. I mean, we've all had that happen to us. So, you know, you have to educate yourself. I think foremost on what to look for. And, you know, it's hard to do that by just seeing it through a video, especially, you know, with people going like four boxes and seven boxes. And I don't know how many boxes they were going to get. Like how small, like, is it going to be that big where you're supposed to see like, Oh, what is it? Okay. Yeah. I guess I'll buy it. <laughs> it's um, it's tough. You know, even when you're going, you're doing a, a stream just by yourself. I mean, it's, you, you can't see it as well as you can in person, but you know, I think, you know, they've created a new Avenue to buy. I think it's it's not going to go away. You're going to see social media continue. I think the only thing that could ever hurt this thing is if they start enforcing fees onto it. Yeah. And oh, even yeah. with that, I think it's grown so much that, you know, the social media, you know, sites can't, you know, don't want to lose that business. 
and you know the people who are doing these you know especially the big accounts like our friends elite and some of the other big ones you know even if they do get assessed a fee i mean i don't think that's going to stop them at this point they're just too big yeah. so you know i think people are going to be you know, i mean anything ever online sales are growing across the board i mean you know just look at like online shopping in general I mean, it's it's just easier. I mean, personally, do I rather look at the would I rather look at the book and buy it? But yeah, but like we can go to ten shows locally, and I might not find the book I'm looking for. But once you hit the internet, I mean, the book almost any book's going to be out there. Right. So. It's easy. It's easier to sell from the seat of your house in in your home than it is to go to a show to to sell it. Yeah, it is. And I mean, I'd love to do that again. I want us to get to there. But I mean, you know, I, someone was literally asking me today, earlier today, it's like, hey, do you guys do shows? And I was like, yeah, well, we did a few, but <laughs> you know, we wound up selling a lot during, you know, quarantine. So, you know, we have to, one of the things is we need to restock. I mean, we have books, but we probably need more. Mm -hmm. um, we need to get new racks. Like, you know, we need to have stuff for setups and stuff like that, you know, which was part, all part of our plan in Before early COVID. 20. And you know we need to find the time to do it also. So it's um, it's you know they're they're big commitments to do these cons because not only do you if it's a you know three day show you know you have you have a, a fourth day in there where you have to set up. Mm -hmm. So people don't may not realize how much time you know commitment that is. And it's a whole weekend. You know when you have kids and family and girlfriends and wives who expect you to be around when you're not doing your normal nine to five and you're like, Hey, I'm going to disappear for four days. It's going to be like, you're going to do what now? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's fun. And I, I think we will do, do it again, but you know, to be determined when. Cool. All right. So this is a great episode. I don't know if we talked about the subject or not, but I, I had a great, <laughs> yeah, it was fun. whatever it is we just talked about, uh, com comic cons are back. Um, that's it for me. You guys got anything else? No. Yeah, I think that was great. That was great. A great little discussion. All right. Well, welcome back, guys. Um, I hope you've enjoyed what we put out so far. I hope you missed us. If you didn't, if you're finding us for the first time, please follow us on uh, Instagram at li comic guys and at Don't Feed the Geeks podcast. We will start putting more content on that side. I promise you. Um, and we're also on Facebook at li comic guys, and we have a website. YouTube. LA comic YouTube. Guys. We're on YouTube. You might be watching this on YouTube. Smash that subscribe button. We probably should have said that in the beginning, but we didn't. And, uh, you know, hit us up at the comments. We love to hear from you guys. We love to hear what you like, what you didn't like. If you have a suggestion for what we should talk about, please let us know that as well. We are super excited to do a lot of different things for you guys. Mm -hmm. This, you know, this next chapter is going to hit all the things that we wanted to do for a while. And we're really excited to get into it. But um, that's it for now. Well said. And so, uh, so until next time, remember. Don't be the geeks.